host of LA Talk Live, would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. The dialogue. The dialogue. The dialogue. The dialogue. The dialogue. The dialogue. The The community voice of Southern California's young professional network. Relevant discussions about the thoughts, concerns, opportunities, and challenges faced by today's generational leaders. Real talk. Real people. This is the dialogue. The dialogue. With Starlet Quarles on 1460 KTYM and streaming live at www.ktym.com. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the dialogue. Real talk, real people. I'm your host, Starlet Quarles. And we're on live at 1460 AM KTYM and streaming live at KTYM.com. I'm joined today by our special dialogue co-host for the month, Mr. Terry Boykins, CEO of Street Positive. How you doing, sir? Hey, what's up, Starlet? Hel- hello, traffic on the show, huh? Uh, traffic was crazy out there today. <laughs> I think everybody's coming over to your show today. That's what's going on. It's hot on the block. Man. As always, the dialogue is the voice of our generation. So thank you so much for joining us here every Wednesday from 5 to 6, where we like to discuss the topics that are relevant to today's generational leaders. Now, today we're continuing our discussion on the black man's role and their need to evolve to become the leaders of the next generation. All month long, we've been discussing black men and started this conversation with their roles as protectors and last week as providers of the black community and the black family. So today we're looking to them for guidance and how effective they are as their role as leaders. Now, if you missed any of our shows thus far on this series, please check out our replays on our Facebook page, where you can also like us now, y'all, at facebook.com backslash The Dialogue LA. Or you can always find us on our website at dialoguela.com. If you missed last week's conversation on the black man's role as the providers, our guests included Mr. Tim Alexander, filmmaker and family activist, most known for his docu-film, A Diary of a Tired Black Man. And also Mr. Paul Scott, financial planner and owner of Paul Scott and Associates Insurance and Financial Services. Again, check out our replays at thedialoguela.com. We have a full house tonight, y'all, a full house. So I don't want to take up too much time. Our discussion continues tonight with the black man's role as leaders and having effective role models on black male leadership. Our guests include Mr. Kevin Hill, founder of the pro education clothing line, Cool as Nerds. Mr. Henry Washington, director of the youth development program, Camp Care. Mr. Lawrence Hewley, architect and camp director for LA and NOMA. And Mr. Reggie Jones Sawyer, candidate for the California Assembly. All here today on The Dialogue to discuss the black man's role as the leader. So we definitely want to hear from you. So make sure you give us a call today at 310-674-5896. That's 310-674-5896. Or email us at comments at the dialogue la.com. Today's show is again brought to you by Street Positive and our co-host, Mr. Terry Boykins. So please make sure you visit streetpositive.com. Com. And also L.A. Noma's third annual architect and engineering camp, whose theme this year is improving our environment for the future. Their camp is for kids and it consists of three Saturdays beginning August 11th, the 18th and the 25th from 8 to 4 p.m. And camp fees are very reasonable, only $100. So for more information, please contact 562-666-2150 or visit noma-lachapter.org where you can find out more information on the summer camp for youth who are interested in learning more about the fields of architecture and engineering. Also, I want to give a couple announcements for a couple of organizations that I'm involved in. I am a board member for the Baldwin Hills Conservancy, and we would like to cordially invite you to an exclusive screening of California Forever, a sneak peek of a two part series about California State Parks airing on PBS this fall. It is next Wednesday, the 25th, uh, from 5 30 to 8 at the Backstage Theater of the Sony Pictures Entertainment, right here in Culver City. 
and the ticket proceeds will benefit the Baldwin Hills Greenhouse Program, a youth program centered at Baldwin Hills Scenic Overlook State Park that engages local high school students in habitat restoration, student-to-student mentorship, community leadership, and the arts. Stakeholders and student representatives will be present as well as some refreshments Tickets are $50, so please contact Martha Balkin at the Los Angeles Audubon Office Administrator, who is the Los Angeles Audubon uh, Office Administrator, at 323-876-7609, or email her at books at laaudubon.org. And last but not least, I am the chair of the Real Estate Associate Program Los Angeles, or REAP LA, which is an executive training program geared towards helping minorities transition into the commercial real estate field. It is a 13-week program and applications are due this upcoming Friday, July 27th. So for more information on the Real Estate Associate Program Los Angeles, if you are minorities interested in entering into the field of commercial real estate, please visit projectreap.org. That is projectreap.org. Org. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we are going to continue our conversation on the black man's role this month, specifically with his role as the leader. Right here with Starla Quarles on the Dialogue, 1460 AM, KTYM, and we're streaming live at KTYM.com. Make sure you give us a call, 310-674-5896. We'll be right back. What's good with it? What's good? Fire from the Dialogue. Many of y'all listeners know I'm currently on parole. I'm looking forward to getting off in the next few months. I ain't going back, man. Man, when I was locked up, I would have loved the opportunity for my family to be able to see me magazines, newspapers, keep me connected to the streets, and inform what's going on in my community. Man. Well, did you know that the Crenshaw Baldwin Hills Mall has a magazine stand that will help you send books, magazines, and even newspapers to your loved ones behind them walls? What? The Urban Experience is the only African-American newsstand that ships to all California correctional facilities. That's Located on the first floor at the Crenshaw Mall, across from Lane Bryant and Foot Action. Okay. Check out the Urban Experience newsstand, where they give you 20% discounts off any items sent to prisons if you mention the dialogue. For more information, please call 323-245-2865. What's the website? Or visit the urbanxbookstore.com. Man, show your family some love behind the walls. Visit the Urban Experience newsstand today. Make sure you tell them to far attention. What's up? Welcome back to the Dialogue Real Talk Real People. We're on live at 1460 AM KTYM and streaming live at KTYM.com. I'm your host, Charlotte Quarles, and I'm joined by our co-host of the month, Mr. Terry Boykins of Street Positive, whose firm advocates and creates various prevention and intervention campaigns for parents and youth. How you doing today, Terry? I'm doing good, Starlet. How you doing? Good. I'm sorry, you guys. I had some uh, bloopers earlier. Our host is Kevin Hall. One of our guests is Kevin Hall, and it's going to be Care Camp with Mr. Uh, Henry Washington. Um, so before we get into our conversation, tell us more about the progress of the uh, Million Father March. How's that going? Oh, boy, I tell you, it's good. You know, matter of fact, um, I'll be at um, DCFS tomorrow. Getting What's ready the, for Park Department of Children and Family Services. Oh, DC. Okay. DCSF. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, you got me working on all these uh, mix-ups today, Starlet. What, <laughs> you know, what's that all about? I'm telling you, you know, we just discombobulated today. And all these black men up in here, you know what? Hey, they, I, you, you know, I ain't got no week. problem with it. I ain't got no I, I problem tell you what, with it. I ain't it. mad at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Okay, you guys, we have a lot to discuss today, so I want to get right into our introductions of our guests, and we do have a full, full house. Our first guest is Mr. Kevin Hall. Uh, He is the founder of Cool as Nerds, a pro-education clothing company. He is a South L.A. native and a graduate of Long Beach State University. Mr. Hall is also a military veteran, having honorably served his country in the United States Marine Corps, but currently works as as a deputy probation officer. During his tenure, he has been instrumental in rehabilitating and mentoring several thousand youth and is currently writing his much anticipated book, Mentor or Die. Please welcome Alpha Phi Alpha Man, Mr. Kevin Hall, to the dialogue. All right, all right. How What's you up, doing, y'all? sir? Good, good, man. Excellent. Mr. Lawrence Hewley, Chief Designer and CEO of Hewley Enterprises Incorporated, an architectural and design and product development firm. He is also a member of the National Organization of Minority Architects Los Angeles and is 
uh, L.A. Noma's summer camp director. Uh, Larry has over 25 years of experience in the mechanical design industry, doing conceptual layout and the design of electromechanical components within the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. And he is extremely passionate about exposing our urban youth to the fields of architecture and engineering. Please welcome Mr. Lawrence Hewley to the dialogue. How are you doing? Excellent, Starla. Thank you very much. And gentlemen, glad to be here. And you brought a guest with us today? Yes, uh, Mr. Otto Stallworth III. How you doing, Otto? Camp. I'm pretty good. How you doing? One of the alumni of the L.A. Uh, NOMA uh, summer program, and we hope to get to Otto, but if not, he's definitely going to come back and talk to us about building urban legacies uh, next week. Also, we have in the studio Mr. Henry Washington, who, you guys, he brought me a bucket full of fruit Uh-oh. and berries and squash from his Ooh. garden in Gardena. Uh, he brings us some southern comfort from Albany, Georgia. He is the director of the youth empowerment program Care Camp. Uh, he is a, another military na- man in the United States Navy for six years and eventually ended up working at Centinella Hospital. Uh, his life took a drastic turn in 1991 when he was arrested due to what he says was his anger and mindset. Uh, after spending five days in jail, he decided to volunteer to work with the youth in his community in hopes that he could prevent them from making the same mistakes he made growing up. Please welcome the Southern comfort of Mr. Henry Washington. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for How you doing? Thank you so much for the fruit. The grapes are off the hook. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And last but not least, a really good friend of mine who I've been meaning to have on my show for quite some time, Mr. Reggie Jones Sawyer, who brings a unique blend of experience and accomplishments in business, labor, and civil rights to his campaign for the 59th Assembly District. He currently serves as Director of Asset Management for the City of Los Angeles, Secretary of the California Democratic Party, and Chair of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Los Angeles. His history of public service includes serving as chair of the L.A. County Small Business Commission and assistant deputy mayor for the city of Los Angeles and vice president of the L.A. Professional Managers Association, Association, which is affiliated with the SEIU Local 721. He earned his bachelor's of science in public administration from USC, which is all right because I'm a Bruin. That's uh-huh. all right. <laughs> and completed the prestigious program for senior executives in state and local government at Harvard's University Kennedy School of Government. Please welcome California State Assembly candidate, Mr. Reggie Jones Sawyer, to the dialogue. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Um, your audience can't see this, but you have a lovely summer dress on. Oh, thank you so much. Because it's hot in here. All these brothers in here, y'all making me hot. <laughs> All right, let's get right into our conversation. And I definitely want to hear everybody's um, uh, response to what you were taught uh, was the role of the black man. And Reggie, I'm going to start with you. What were you taught growing up was the role of black men? Well, I, I'm from Arkansas, Little Rock. I was born. And we were taught a lot of Southern values, you know. I was taught that the role of the black man is to be the head of your family. Excellent. To raise your children in a good Christian environment, to keep your roof over your family's head, make certain everyone's fed, and most important, be a good example for your race. Excellent. Henry, what were you taught was the role of the black man growing up? Now, you got some Southern comfort, just like uh, Reggie here. What were you taught now? Uh, Be respectful. Try to work hard and provide for your family. Same as the gentleman. Okay. But coming from a single uh, parent home by my grandmother, there were other men in the neighborhood had to, you know, push me around, get my attention, stuff okay. like that. Okay, so excellent. All right, Kevin, what were you taught was the role of the black man growing up? Um, To be an ambassador to your community and to your people. Excellent. I like that word, ambassador. Lawrence? Well, I also came from a broken home. Uh, but uh, one of the things that uh, some of my coaches – um, instilled in me was uh, to make an impact. Okay. To uh, do your, your sports coaches. Yeah, my, my okay. sports coaches. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, very good. We'll talk about that later, but uh, definitely has some definitely great role models that instilled in me that it's all about taking care of business, family first. You know, putting God first, actually, family second. Okay. Family move the mic business. just a little bit closer to you. Thank you. Okay. I guess I was mentioning God first, mm-hmm. family second, and then take care of your business. Okay. If you do all those things in, in the proper order, everything will work out perfectly. So just quickly, I want everybody to name one man that changed your life and um, how. Anybody jump in. Well, as I, as I was mentioning since I've got the mic, uh, a gentleman by the name of Chet Brewer, who was okay. a Negro League baseball pitcher, 
uh, instilled in me uh, some real sharp values when I was growing up because, again, I'm very talented, but didn't have much direction growing up. Okay. And uh, he just grabbed me by the collar one day and said, hey, you got too much talent to not be taking care of business. Okay. And uh, that was enough to kind of drive me and focus me in the right direction. Okay, Reggie. Uh, my uncle is uh, Jefferson Thomas. He's one of the Little Rock Nine, one of the nine kids that integrated Central High School in 1957. Wow. And he instilled in me uh, a sense of humility. Mm. I know when I found out who he was, I would say, look, you're a civil rights icon. I mean, you should be in jet ebony. Everybody should know about you. And he told me I just did what I needed to do, which was go to the best school in Little Rock, Arkansas. I had no idea that I would be able to change history so that every African-American would go to the school of their choice. And at that time, I was going to USC. And in 57, there weren't a whole lot of brothers going to USC. Mm -hmm. And so I know if it wasn't for the efforts that he went through, he was beaten, he was kicked, he was punched, he was spit on, all sorts of atrocities so that anyone can get the best education they can anywhere. And he wore it very humbly. Okay. And that inspired Kevin. me. Kevin. Yeah, I would say there, there was like a constellation of men who got their fingerprints all over me. But if I had to choose one, it would probably be uh, my grandfather, Leo, rest in peace. And the reason being is because, you know, he just had a strong work ethic, uh, the ability to do more with less, and just the way he treated other people. Okay. And rubbed off on all right. Henry? I say Mr. Charlie Gamage, um, a carpenter in my neighborhood, two houses down, you know, he he had a large family, you know, about 10 children, and he worked every day. I remember when he um, injured his finger, cut it off his thumb, and, and to see how he recovered, bounced back and still provided for his family. He didn't let that injury stop him. He just continued to work and without a Without oh, them? Yes. Okay. Now, what was interesting to me, now that you guys mentioned your father, why? Anybody? Kevin? Um, for me, you know, um, to keep it 150. Keep uh, it 100. Father. This is the dialogue. Real talk, real people. 150 <laughs> plus tax. Uh, <laughs> and move the mic a little bit closer to you, sweetie. Um, Thank you. You know, my father wasn't, wasn't around a whole lot. He's one of them seasonal fathers, you know, July 4th, Christmas, sometimes Thanksgiving. But growing up in my sort of my formative years, my grandfather was always there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Reggie? Um, both my stepfather and father are very influential. I mean, my name is Joan Sawyer. That's to honor both my stepfather and father. And uh, um, the re you said what changed your life. They influenced my life. And when you see my father, I look exactly like him. And my stepfather has the same mannerisms. But the person that had that changed me, which I think is was the question. Okay, very was, good. Was was my uncle Jefferson Thomas? Okay, so now what is, do you believe that this generation of black men are being taught about? leadership and being a leader anybody jump in uh lawrence well that's um <clears throat> that's a pretty loaded question but uh, i think that a lot of them are getting a lot of uh, good instruction at home okay uh, i think that the challenge is is that there is a lot of broken homes in our our community mm -hmm. uh the challenge is is that there's men out there trying to take care of their business and do, the, do what they have to do but there's only so much time in the day. Okay. And that's one of the things that we as a group with Noma have kind of like made one of our uh, choice missions is to, to get information, say young black men um, exposing what they do, okay, uh, to young black men and, and, and young black women mm -hmm. uh, in terms of this is how you want to live your life and you want to live your life in such a way where it's, where it, it's circumspect. You could, you could, you could, you could be in front of anyone. I mean, from the president all the way down, and they would respect what you had to say. Okay. All right, uh, Henry. What do you think this generation of black men are being taught about leadership, and specifically black male leadership? Oh man, I, I, to me, the way I see it, I don't see the amount of black male leadership out there. Okay. Because uh, you can, you can uh, teach children. In a lot of different ways, but our children are not being taught with the basics. You know, working hard. If you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, be respectful. Uh, you have to go out and you have to apply yourself in order to make things happen. Okay. It's being told, but it's not being told on a level that it should. 
Okay. You know, there. I, I I look at my father, and it makes me angry because my father. First time I saw him, I was nine years old. He come to my house. I'm your father, Henry, and he take me to his house. And next thing I know, his wife. I can hear his wife say, "What you bring him in here for?" Mm, mm-hmm. You know. Um, and that bothers me. Okay. Because there's a lot of males out there without a father, but then there's a, I'm, I see myself as the type leader that I can show children how. Okay. I can, and I prefer, and that what we need more men to come out here and let's teach these youngsters. Let's grab them off the street. Let's do whatever it takes. Let's get them because you can teach some, you can teach some, you can teach some, you can teach every last one of us. And and I I shouldn't be stuck with a bunch of children six days of out of a week in a garden, and be, because I don't have enough help. But I'm doing this. Okay. I'm so, but. I'm just saying. Like, okay. little, it's all good. I see you your know. passion. Reggie, who's holding black men accountable? <laughs> Who is holding our black men accountable to leading uh, not only our community, but our families and our, our, our generation of black men growing up today? Um, I think most black men are more self-reflective now. Um, we don't have a Martin Luther King. We don't have a Mayor Tom Bradley. We don't have a centralized figure. So each one of us are holding ourselves accountable. Um, and each black man has their own internal accountability cl- clock. Um, I'll give you an example. When a lot of us in this room were young, if someone got someone pregnant, then the whole community would get on you, make you accountable to make sure you married that person, you still care of that kid, and the whole community got on you. And you know that is I, not that's happening not happening now. now. Oh, no. It's not at all. So it's now it's on each individual to make that conscious choice. Okay. So, Kevin, let me ask you. So how do you teach fatherless boys to become leaders? Um, great question. Um the thing that, you know, jumps out to me is just action, you know, being active. Um, you know, it's kind of like basketball where you're down by 30 points and it's the fourth quarter and you know you have to win the game. And um, you got to be active. we got to be visible. We have to engage. we got to put boots on the ground. We have to just stimulate the intellect of our, our young brothers and bring them full circle. Okay. All right. Now, Otto, you're the, the youngest brother up in here. Yeah. You know, share with us a little bit about... Uh, you know, who was your inspiration and, and, and how do you see yourself as a as a emerging black male leader? Well, I'd have to agree that um, since we don't have a centralized figure, you know, for me, it was a constellation of, of men that, you know, influenced me and got me to where I am. Um, what was the second part of your question? Just in terms of yourself and your own personal evolution. Well, yeah, know. for me, you know, my uh, my plan is to become an architect and I've seen on that path to becoming you know, an architecture student and now a professional. Um, you know, I'm seeing all the kids we're leaving back and, you know, young black men are not learning what they need to learn. So, you know, this camp, Nomas Camp is really a way to do that. And you also had the the privilege, uh, I'd like to say, of attending an HBCU. What was that experience like for you uh, going to Howard University and being around all that black influence and then in a chocolate city? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, w- it was an amazing experience, you know, just West Coast to East Coast was also a very interesting transition. Um, I was able to see how communities are there and that really we're all, all these urban areas are very similar, you know, and there's things that can tie us, tie them all together. And I think architecture and engineering is definitely one of those things, um, it's like the gentleman surrounding me. Absolutely. I mean, you know, being a third generation community developer myself, I do uh, understand how the power of you know redevelopment and architecture and getting you know exposing more urban youth to those type of careers uh lawrence you want to say something yeah i want to piggyback on what otto was saying uh because in our community you know and that's worldwide we have a tremendous creativity okay and that's that's without question okay okay uh we have some tremendous talent uh the key thing here as is at a young age how do you really hone that talent mm-hmm and that's what we're all about. Okay. Okay. Because again, at the end of the day, it's it's a tremendous. Uh, I mean, to get to the end of your life and not and have all these talents that you never really presented or never really made become reality mm-hmm. is 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 what you don't want to have to have happen in your life. So I, my goal is to is to really just impart the the skills that that I've learned over the years. Uh, and uh, as well as Otto, I believe that he can speak the same way, 
Uh, that's why we were part of this Noma Summer Camp. Okay. Uh, because I think that that's a step in the right direction because young kids need direction and young kids need to know how to take that creative talent. If they like to draw or if they like to, 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 to build stuff, well, how do you really do that? Okay. And how do you really build a skill set so you can be diverse enough to really um, make an impact? Excellent. You know, Kevin, before we get to the commercial break, I want to spend some time with you um, because I know that you deal with a lot of at risk uh, youth and especially a lot of black men who participate in the underground economy. So at what age should you start beginning to instill leadership in our black men? Let's start with a great question. I, I think to, to, to kind of premise um, uh, that, that statement um, I guess we can stand on agreement that, uh, you know, a young a male's particularly young male's uh, purpose in life is to problem solve. Okay. And when you have the ability to solve problems, people will seek you out, uh, regardless of one's age. So the age would vary. Um, and so uh, given the young male's age, uh, you know, when his curiosity starts to arouse, when he starts asking questions, uh, inquiring about things, being adventurous, as boys will typically and, and innately do, it's a good opportunity to seize that opportunity and start dripping on him with leadership, love, qualities, and skills. Okay. So what did you learn? Because you have a, a military background. So what did you learn about leadership and discipline from your military experience? <clears throat> well, um, to be kind of facetious and humorous, you know, and frank, um, it's, it's kind of, you know, in a corps, in the Marine Corps, it was lead, um, follow or get the hell out the way. Mm, okay. Um, because there's no time for foolishness okay. in leadership. Um, and, uh, and in the military, in the Marine Corps, they have what's called the Leadership School, Leadership Academy. Um, and um, it, there was a warrior's ethos, and it was based on tenets, three tenets. One um, is to know yourself, which is self-improvement and personal development. Two is to know your job, um, which is uh, being an expert, becoming an expert, a subject matter expert in your respective field or profession. And three is to know your people. Mm. And that's building relationships, um, you know, with your peers. Okay. Uh, in terms of the discipline, which is kind of like the cousin to leadership, um, kind of complements leadership in, in a way, which basically means to do something that has to be done, although you don't want to do it. Okay. So those are basically the two things that I brought out in the military and I apply it and it overspills into everyday practices in life. And you teach that to your students that you mentor? All the time. Okay, excellent. Um, now, how do you get more black men, especially, you know, young black men, how do you get them to step up and be leaders? I mean, you know, Henry talked about there's not enough, you know, hands on, on some of these brothers out here on the streets, especially uh, with these fatherless uh, sons. So how do you get black men to step up and want to care and do more, uh, be more? <laughs> uh, that's the age of age old um, old age question um, we're at a critical stage whereby we're, we're losing our precious generation of up and coming talented young males with so 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 much potential and um, you know I, I think we, we, we you know we stop asking and, 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 and start demanding mm. um, you know individually and collectively um, to, the, to the brothers to the men that's out there and the sound of my voice uh, volunteer make yourself accessible Make yourself approachable. Go seek out these young men, these young males who desperately and silently um, is looking for someone like you to do so. OK. And we need Big Mama back. We need Big Mama on the porch doing some more whoopings. All right. So we have a caller on the dialogue. Hi, caller. You're on. Give us your, your comment or question for our guests. Caller? Hello there. Um, this is caller. I'm sorry. Your voice is pop locking. All right, caller, give us a call back. Uh, Terry, you want to say something? Well, you know, I think right where uh, Kevin was talking about, um, you know, you're talking about how do you get these young men to step up? I think you got to step to them. Mm. And that's one of the things that we as black men have not done enough in the last 30 years. Okay. We have not taken to the streets to step the young black men because once they know that you are bold enough to step to you, are you to step to them? They will follow you. Really? Even if they got a gun in their hand? Some of these kids are crazy. Well, you know, they may be crazy, but they want to be loved. Okay. Excellent. And that's one of the things that I think we have gotten a little twisted. We 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 assume that these we don't we gotta stop being afraid to step to these young people. Okay. That's what's going on. Right. We we gotta fear. And I'll tell you what, a dog will bite somebody who they think is afraid of them. Mm. And that's what's happened with these young people. If they sense that a man is cowered down, 
they going to they going to strike. OK. All right. Very good. Henry, I see you shaking your head. Yeah. Why should we be afraid? I feel that every person that I come into contact, if I can look you out of the eye and say hi, I should be able to do that to another young black male. We don't do that. OK. We just separate ourselves from those black males. And, I, and I've experienced them saying, hey, brother, show me how to do this. Mm. And every time you show them, they do it. Okay. You know, just like the brother was saying. And, and But we as men, I don't know what our problems are or is or whatever, okay. but we need to all go and stop doing <laughs> what we're not doing. And okay. that's eye to eye and stepping up. Okay. Uh, Larry. Uh, I just want to add to what the brothers are saying here today. Uh, because I think an innate quality of every young black man is that they want to learn. Okay. I don't care what it is because again, they realize that there are pitfalls, pit holes, rather potholes, uh, cracks in the street. Mm. There's, there's valleys, there's canyons that they can step into and lose it. Okay. okay? They definitely want to come to someone. Okay. That can give them some information on that roadmap on how to avoid those pitfalls okay. or those 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 manholes or those those peaks and valleys. Okay, so so I say all that to say that innately everyone wants to learn. Okay. Okay. It's how it's presented. All right. Excellent. It's how it's presented. Okay. And and I think that that's the challenge with our LA Unified School District. Mm. Okay. Is that they don't <laughs> they do not emphasize the real thing. Right. Okay. These young kids are very sharp. Okay. They want something that is going to be tangible, that they can hold on to, that they can know that can really help them. Okay. Okay. All right. They're just not looking for what they see regurgitated gurg- on a constant basis just by what somebody's read out of a book. Okay. Excellent. They want, okay. They want some real, real life experience. Okay. Before we go to commercial break, I want to get to our... Uh, caller, and then we're going to come back and talk uh, about uh, political leadership with uh, Reggie Tone Sawyer. Uh, hi, you're on the dialogue. Hey, Starlet, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Listen, I've been listening to the conversation. I got two points. Number one, it's been my experience that a lot of us just don't talk. We, we don't talk to each other. Uh, we hold a lot of things inside, and I don't know if you, we don't talk because we don't trust one another or what. I don't know what that's about, and I'll let you guys elaborate on that. And the second point that I have is when they were saying that we don't have a centralized figure as like a, a Tom Bradley or Dr. King, but you guys forget who the President of the United States is? Mm-hmm. If he showed you anything, he showed, I mean, good, bad, or different, I'm not trying to slam nobody, but that, that the President has showed me personally that sky's the limit. I can do anything, accomplish anything that I want to accomplish with hard work and, and perseverance. And that's that's how I feel about that. Also, simplify to Kevin Hall. Simplify, my brother. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for your call. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We want to hear from you. 310-674-5896. That's 310-674-5896. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about political leadership. Where is the next generation of political leaders, political black male leaders? We'll be right back. I remember the early days of my business when I... We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Walk, run, climb, play. Solgar number seven can help. Feel the difference for yourself. Solgar number seven actually shows improvement in joint comfort within seven days. Now you can start to get back on track fast and pursue the activities you love. Soul Guard Number no. 7 is a breakthrough in joint care with no glucosamine and no chondroitin. The advanced bioactives in Soul Guard Number no. 7 help to increase flexibility, mobility, range of motion, and actually shows improvement within just seven days. One capsule once a day is all you need. When stiff joints occasionally say no, Solgar number seven says yes. Visit Solgar.com and learn more about Solgar number seven today. That's www.solgar.com, www.solgar.com. Solgar number seven, 
official sponsors of Here's to Your Health with Josh Lane and L.A. Talk Live. Mountain Valley Spring Water, since 1871, has been bottled at the source in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Twice named the best tasting water in the world, Mountain Valley Water is naturally alkaline and bottled in glass, providing the perfect blend of nature's minerals, giving you a crisp, clean taste. To start your home and office delivery in Southern California, call us at 1-800-499-9982 or visit us online at www.mountainvalleywaterla.com. New customers will receive their first two five-gallon bottles free. Mountain Valley Water, the official sponsor of Here's to Your Health with Josh Lane on LA Talk Live. and my line of credit was on plastic. Now things have changed and you have a real job creating business. Recently, I turned to my bank for a new loan and found out they couldn't meet my needs. I now realize that after the credit crisis, many financial institutions no longer have bankers with the necessary expertise to understand my business or have the ability to provide flexible credit solutions. You searched for a better solution from someone with financial knowledge of a big bank and common sense understanding of a small business. I found Michael Banner and the Los Angeles LDC who saw solved my problem and exceeded my expectations. Now, when I have a credit or other financial need, my first call is to the Los Angeles LDC. They've earned my trust by providing the best credit solutions and advice at affordable rates and terms. Where do you go when the banks say no? Los Angeles LDC, a community development financial institution. On the web at losangelesldc.com or by phone 800-366-1178. Loans made under a commercial finance lender's license from the California Department of Corporations. Welcome back to the Dialogue, Real Talk, Real People. Uh, we're on live at 1460 AM and streaming live at ktym.com. I am your host, Startup Quarles, and I'm smacking on these grapes from uh, Henry Washington's garden. And I am joined today by my co-host, Mr. Terry Boykins of Street Positive. And we're talking with Kevin Hall, Larry Hewley, Henry Washington, and Reggie Jones-Sawyer on the black man's role as leaders right here on The Dialogue. Again, we want to hear from you, 310-674-5896. 310-674-5896. And before we get to Reggie, we have a caller. Hi, you on with the dialogue? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, how you doing? Your uh, comment or question for our guest? Yes, I do. Uh, my name is Rodney Salisbury. Hi, Rodney. How are you? Good. And, you have a comment uh, or question? thoroughly enjoying this show. Thank you. I'm familiar with uh, some of your guests. Um, Kevin Hall. What's up, Rod? Uh, who has a great organization that uh, if he hasn't spoke about, I'm sure he will soon, um, that is helping um, young men all over America, and especially right here in Los Angeles. And one thing that Kevin said that I wanted to touch on is um, we need to stop asking and start demanding. Mm. I think that is so true. Okay. And, and I think we should be role models. I think that's important. And I love the uh, caller who mentioned Barack Obama. Absolutely. Um, I think that one thing that all the young men that are there speaking to you today be concerned about is Barack getting back into the White House. Absolutely. Thank uh, you. We can't take for granted that he's going to get there. And I'd like to know um, what these gentlemen are doing to make sure that young black men, young people in general, get out and vote uh, for Barack. Excellent. Excellent. And thank you for that transition to our next guest, Mr. Reggie John Sawyer, who is currently running for the California State Assembly. Uh, Reggie, what are we doing? Well, I'm glad that that caller asked, and uh, and to the other caller, no, I did not forget our great President Barack Obama, and we have to. I mean, we have to get reelected. I'm Secretary of the California Democratic Party. Okay. I'm the highest ranking African American in the Democratic Party right now in California. All right now. And there's a major, major effort to get African American votes out, in particular, young people. Young people drove the election mm. for Barack Obama four years ago. Young people will drive this election again. And it was our young people. And I'll just give you a quick story. My daughter goes to Hampton. Um, she has never really been politically active. I've been politically active all my life. And one day she called me and said, Dad, guess what I did? Um, and it was after Barack took Virginia, because Hampton's in Virginia. She said, um, I got all the students from out of state to re-register in Virginia. And we're the reason why Barack Obama took Virginia. How wonderful. That kind of activism on a large scale scale is what's going to be needed to lift him up back into the White House again. And so there's there's um, I think there's the Obama for America's on Crenshaw right now. 
Um, you can go there and volunteer. The California Democratic Party will have a South Los Angeles um, headquarters real soon. And so there's plenty of places, not only here in California, to call, because California is a safe state. But we also need people to get on the phone to call other states okay. like Nevada, Arizona and others okay. uh, to, to make sure that we get him back in. So who who is grooming the next generation of political leadership? I mean, we're going to have parks uh, leaving uh, soon and we have all these uh, seats that are going to be exposed. Who is grooming the next generation of black male leadership? And, and the other point that was made is pretty good. is We don't talk to one another. OK, everyone's doing their own thing at grooming somebody for something. Uh, we don't have a coro. If you know what coro is, coro is a, is a is a national organization that trains young people to go into politics in all different forms. We don't have a black coro. Okay. That an institute. The closest thing that we do have to it is Law Pi, the Los Angeles African American Women's Political Institute. And I am a graduate. Which trains young women to go into politics. We have nothing for black men. Why is that? Uh, because we haven't started yet. Okay. I haven't started it yet. You, you, okay. you haven't started. There you go. We're, we, right. We've got to make that happen. Okay. Because that's how we get that next generation in, given that formalized um, way to get in. Right now, each elected official, whether it's Waters, Bass, Price, Wright, Bradford, Hall, really Thomas, Parks, and Perry, and Wesson, they have protégés that individually that they're they're grooming. Okay. Now, will they eventually make it to the point where they they they'll run for office? I don't know. But we need to expand. Our, our reach out to everyone. How so come we, we don't have a, a black pack? They have a super pack. How come we don't have a black pack? Uh, we have Bay Pack. We have just a couple of packs, but it's not as, you're right, it's not as prevalent as uh, the others, especially okay. Republican, and it's not as uh, healthy, wealthy as others. Um, we spend more than anybody else. We could build a pack like no other. Okay, if we just stop buying rims and shoes, we can build a pack. Our phones are blowing up. So, Reggie, I want to get back to you. But, hi, you're on with the dialogue. You have a comment or question for our guest. Hello? Yes, my, my name is Drake Dillard. And um, I just wanted to add to the conversation. Um, I think I don't want to dwell on things we don't do, but some things that are positive that I think is being done is in the fraternities. Um, we were talking about black men and what are the men doing. There are some very positive things that fraternities are doing, whether it's the Omegas, Alphas, or Kappas. Uh, and I think, again, those programs need to be more visible in our communities and taking advantage of it in, in larger numbers. I think the way you do that, though, is to have funding. Okay. So I think a lot of times we have good programs that are very positive and doing great things. The funding is not there. Okay. All right. And uh, and that's very critical to any program. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, sure. you're on with the dialogue. You have a comment or question for our guests? Oh, uh, thank you for taking my call. I'd like to commend everyone here today for the wonderful work that you're doing. God bless you. But my question, uh, comment, really has to deal with youth unemployment and how uh, our children, you know, in particular black children, are six times likely to be unemployed. And yet we don't have enough jobs. I'm not saying it's not because we're, you know, not trying or anything like that. We don't have enough black businesses, number one. Mm. But uh, where is the focus on youth employment? And also our leadership really has to be uh, sought out at the level of the community um, coalitions and things like that, much like our president. He came from that background of uh, community, uh, you know, activism. So, uh, I just wanted to leave that, and y'all have a blessed day. Thank you so much. Uh, Reggie, what about uh, youth employment? And not only just employment, but entrepreneurship. I May mean, I often say the underground economy is still an economy. There's supply and demand, right. and they have transferable skills, and we need to promote more entrepreneurship. What are we doing about uh, uh, employment for our young black males? Um, we, we need to realize that not everyone wants to go to college. Okay. Not everyone wants to have a skill set that we're <clears throat> traditional. I'll give you an example. Um, the city of Los Angeles, which I participated in, created 10,000 jobs through um, infrastructure projects, building new fire stations, police stations, libraries. 10,000 people were trained. Uh, a, a significant amount of them were African American and, and brown people. They learned to be carpenters, electricians, went into the union hall. 10,000 of them, about a third of them came back to the city and worked. A third of them went and worked in the union hall or the labor hall. Another third just hung their own shingle. Mm. They can go out and make Forty thousand dollars a year doing electrical work, just getting up off the couch. Okay. We need to create those type of 
inroads for our young people okay. who may not want to wear a suit and tie, who may be coming out of the prison system because if someone's fixing your light or painting your house, you don't care if they're tatted up or anything. You want to make sure it gets done. Absolutely. And we have these skills, people who want to do that kind of work, and we need to create that avenue for them okay. so, and teach them how to fish. Ultimately. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us real quickly, why are you running for the assembly and what are you looking to achieve? Um, as I said earlier, I owe. Um, I have a wonderful career. Um, a lot has been given to me, but I owe and I have to give back. And so I'm running because I know I stand on other shoulders and I need to get to the assembly because, as we all know, it is not in the best shape right now. Okay. And we need people with skills that can pull people together, but also create jobs. And when you hear, hopefully, after my 12 years of being in the assembly, when you hear the word revenue, you'll be thinking of me because we also need to create other avenues of other than taxes to make government more efficient so we didn't plow those monies back into education, plow those money into community groups, plow the money back into creating jobs for our young people. Okay. How can people find you? What are your website? Uh, www.reggiejonesawyer.com. Okay. Excellent. Hi, caller. You are on with the dialogue. You have a comment or question for our guests? I have a question. My question is, I, I agree with what the gentleman was just saying about that we need to teach skill sets to the kids. We're arguing for arts in the schools. Why are we arguing for trades to be taught in LAUSD? Okay. Right. Like shop, electrician, cooking, so that they have I those skill sets exactly and those things can be honed. Therefore, when they're in college or if they choose not to go to college, they can get jobs. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Larry, I'm going to have you answer her question. Well, <clears throat> I want to go back uh, to some of the original questions, but I think that the key thing here is that I, I use the term that money is a tremendous aphrodisiac. Okay. It's all about the dollars here. And, uh, once we can get in a position where we're working together, because uh, there, there's several things that have kind of happened since I, as I've been listening. Uh, one, that we've we've got to get our our mindset out of this Willie Lynch syndrome. Oh my God! Okay, in terms of how we work together. Okay, we work together with we're looking over each other's shoulder. We can't trust each other. We got to figure out what we need to do to change that that whole paradigm. Okay. Okay. Um, and then. Uh, Speaking on the issue of demanding, well, yeah, we need to demand some stuff, but you have to understand that President Obama is moving a tremendous ship in an ocean of a bunch of sharks and a bunch of whales and a bunch of uh, dinosaurs and all that sort of thing, and, it, and it, it's going to take a wide berth to turn it around. Okay. And he's doing the right things, okay? We need to continue to support that, okay? okay? And then um, I think that it's not so much demanding what we need to do. We need to start doing. Just okay, doing, we got to start showing doing, up. Right. showing up and making stuff happen. And Reggie, I really appreciate where you're coming from in terms of making things happen. Okay, we need to, to to continue the dialogue after this radio show. Okay, so we can start really putting things together so we right. can build these, help these young people build some skill sets so when they they don't just have to go look for a job. Okay. It's not about just looking for a job. It's like, how do you make an impact? Okay. Or absolutely. What are you doing to change our society on a daily basis? If young people start getting that idea in their head, okay, that it's not about just trying to get a job so they can earn some money, okay, but they can make an impact to change our society. How are they becoming change agents? Okay. How are they becoming change agents? How are they becoming rain makers? Absolutely. Okay. Because we're living in the desert right now. We need some rain. I am so thirsty. Uh, Terry, uh, you had a comment. Well, you know, you look at what's going on in the Silicon Valley and the, and the amount of wealth that's being generated just in that industry. You look at what we've done with the black men. We have basically um, almost isolated them to the, the, the prison industrial complex. Mm. We're not talking about this issue in terms of what took place years ago about how they began to cut programs uh, and looking at building another industry. And because of the political process, we don't control uh, where the laws are being made. So things were taking place that we were not paying attention to because we got caught up. Okay. And so when you look at what happens at home, black men should there is no black boy on any street in America that should be without a mentor or a black man on that same street. Mm. And so you got a 40% unemployment amongst black males, 16 to 20, 35 years of age, which is absolutely ridiculous. If that happened in white America, it would be, you know, hell would break out okay. in America. All right. And so that's one of the things we have to look at is what happened with the, uh, the whole 
uh, segue to the prison system that we are not paying attention to. So they cut those trades, they cut those after school programs intentionally to create a commodity in the prison industrial complex. Absolutely. Uh, Larry, I want to come back to you because I want to piggyback on our conversation about politics. And you and I both know that politics and development, real estate development, run hand in hand. So discuss the need for leadership in the area of urban redevelopment. Wow. Well, I don't care if you don't know anything about urban development or if you don't know anything about politics. The key thing here is that as a to a man, okay, and I kind of, I got to go back to my brother's point, uh, Terry. Terry's point here, is there is a system in play that has black America shackled. Okay. And that's the prison system. Mm. Every brother that's in prison, if you're listening to this radio spot right now, you need to figure out how you can get yourself out of prison, how you can get your, and the brothers that are, that are on probation and that are that are that are thinking about doing something wrong, you need to you need to change that whole attitude right now. Okay. Okay, and get your act together, get in a program so you can get whatever it need whatever needs to happen for you to rehabilitate your own mind in your own way in terms of understanding that there is an opportunity, there is success right there in front of you mm-hmm. that you got to step your game up to make it happen. That's what it's all about. Okay. And in, in, in terms of development. Those things will organically happen, okay, if we have people stepping up to the plate. Okay. But we can't have 60% of our society in, incarcerated. So share with us about, about what NOMA, the work that NOMA does, and why you're so passionate about uh, exposing urban youth to the uh, architecture and engineering trades. Well, I, I think that from, <clears throat> from the genesis of design, uh, from the, the, the genesis of who we are, okay, we have designed pyramids, okay? We've built stuff. I mean, if you, go, if, you, if you go back to even before we could even have patents, you've got the Elijah McCoys, okay? The Benjamin Bannikers, okay? You've got, um, I mean, Lewis Latimer um, creating the, the light filament so that um, Edison could actually create a light bulb. Mm. Those are the kinds of people that have already... Uh, made the pathway okay. so so it's in us it's innately in absolutely. us to create absolutely. okay and so our goal is with the Noma summer camp is to say hey look there are some skill sets that you can learn that we can teach you to help you take that concept that I that you have in your mind that's gone dormant and make it become reality I love it. and that's why we're so passionate about this summer camp okay now right uh, Otto quickly share with us your experience uh, from the Noma camp and and what you got out of it to become yeah. an architect. Well, I, I definitely want I definitely want to add that um on Kevin's point about problem solving, I think that you know that's the main um, target that we're looking at here. And even if the kids are not going to go into architecture engineering, it's going to expose them just to a different uh, set of process of thinking. Okay. So it's definitely very necessary. Okay. All right. Excellent. Our, our phone is blowing up. Caller. Hi. You're on with the dialogue. You have a comment or question for our guests. Hi. This is Charles and Unite Us. Hi, Charles. Yes. Uh, just, uh, you know, these men are doing a great job articulating the problems. A uh, couple of solutions is for each one of us to go out and help one person find a job. Mm. And then help and then support one new black business each month. Absolutely. We did th- those two things collectively. That would make a big, big difference. Absolutely. And, then, and stay in contact with your congressman in the White House. I just called the White House about a, a bill tomorrow they're going to vote on called the Bring Jobs Home Act. You know how these companies get benefits for shifting jobs offshore. They're trying to end that and credit them for bringing jobs back home. So I got a press release back from the White House. I'm going to send that out to my list of people and uh you know, we got to get on these senators and make sure they vote the right way. Okay. Thank you so much, okay. Charles. Uh, quickly before I get to... Um, uh, Kevin, uh, what do you want to share with us? I just want to say we got to put America back to work. Okay, it and starts how, right here in our community. And how can kids find uh, your Noma? How can parents get more involved in Noma and get the kids in the camp? Well, uh, they can go to our website, our local LA chapter website, which is Noma. That's N O M A dash L A chapter dot O R G, and then click on the summer camp button, and uh, they will be directed to our summer camp for application and registration excellent and kevin quickly you want to tell us oh and just to uh just to reiterate what the, what the caller was saying and sort of piggyback 
um, we got to understand that we, we're in a capitalistic society. And just to put that in perspective, you know, capitalism can be defined as the ideology by which land and resources are controlled by a few. And the motivating factor, the motivating factor is profit. Okay. It's about cash is king. And, you know, I hear jobs, 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 but take it upon yourselves, folks, to open up some kind of business. I don't care if it's weaves, selling oranges, incense, or developing the next microchip. Right. Because when you have that. They're giving you, pounds up in here, y'all. They're giving pounds. You don't have a ceiling on how much money that you can make. <laughs> and if you don't have a business today, that means you just subscribe to modern day slavery. Ooh, ooh, say that, say that. A caller, create, you are create, on with. Create, create. Caller, you are on with the dialogue. You have a comment or question for our guests. Hello. Hi. This is Ms. Gordon. Um, I have teenage boys and I have older men. I, my son's like 23, 22. The problem is, is a lot of men is not taking responsibility for their children. I worked for the last, what, 15 years of my life. Okay? These boys are here. They need haircuts. They need shoes. Bring the jobs back to communities where they can look productive to the society. Okay. Excellent. Because a lot of fathers... I'm a mother now. I see one of my, my son's father. It's all about him. My son brings home a three-point grade point average. He takes report cards to his dad's house. Guess how much money he only hands him? Mm. 50 cents. Now, that ain't even right. <clears throat> that ain't even right. Henry, to talk about our boys walking around napping in no shoes and uh, not the... <laughs> excuse you know, me, excuse you me, know, excuse me. It's not, you know what? It's not nappy in no shoes. <laughs> It's a lot of men that's hiding behind his SSI and his GR, and we can't get our money for our children. Okay. This uh, uh, attorney, a lot of men is laying down with women and not playing the future. These children walk around these streets, they hungry, they need jobs. Okay. They want to look productive so they can get a okay. job. Okay, thank you. Let me let uh, Henry uh, respond to your question, Henry. Uh, my thing is, ma'am, for, thank your, you, caller. for your son, um, if you send your son over to Perry Middle School, uh, tomorrow, and um, I'll see what I can do uh, to help your son out in any kind of way I can. That's the teenager, the adult. Um, I, 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 he could come out and help us dig some some soils up and turn some soil, and and we can plant some more vegetables, and we can doggone start providing food for the community instead of going to Vons, Ralphs, all these other places. We can start growing our own food, just like the food right. that I brought in here tonight. And they are delicious. And I tell you what, until we start taking these children at the age of six and start exposing them to more things like gardens, like different, exposing them to the agriculture, teach them how to break down, build, and start reforming, even if they're going to destroy something. That's right. Keep them, keep these youngsters busy early. Okay, Ma tell, us, tell us more about Care Camp. Care Camp, who? We can't have church now. Tell us about Care Camp. <laughs> this is where we create activities, re recreation, and education. We teach youngsters how to work. If they don't work, they don't eat. Mm. If your child come to us, I guarantee you we will teach your child how to do some work. Use a mop, use a rake, Use a, a weed whacker, tiller, shovel, pickaxe. I get out there and I dig with them. I'm 51 years old. I don't have any biological children. Is that right? Let, let me tell you something, young lady. We can't. I got plenty of children. All those that come around me, I teach. Right. Male, female, mm. black, white, Latino, Asian. I don't care. They send them to me to the from the court system. They send them to care camp. How can people find care camp? Oh, you can go to Facebook. We got a Facebook page. You, got, you, you can you, see what we're doing. Okay. You won't see me. <laughs> You'll see those children. You got a telephone number, email they can uh, contact you? They can you? contact me at uh, area code 323-501-9746. Okay, excellent. And, and Kevin, I'm going to start with you. Uh, where do we go from here and how? what, what advice do you have for parents on teaching uh, the next generation of leadership. And tell us a little bit about your uh, uh, cool as nerds. Cool as nerds. Um, well, there's two resources. Uh, uh, audience, get a pen and paper. Um, uh, one is called uh, Brother to Brother Organization. Um, founder is uh, Stinson Brown. Um, and uh, I'm the vice chair. And uh, the, uh, it's a nonprofit mentoring organization uh, based out in L.A. We serviced, uh, we, we've been to uh, juvenile facilities. We've been to 
schools of higher learning, the UCLA's, the USC's, the UC Riverside's, a very sought after group and is comprised of a wealth of uh, professional men from various backgrounds. And our sole purpose is to provide love and leadership uh, to everyone at risk, people who are doing well, so on and so forth, to eradicate generational curses and give our young males um, the best opportunity to achieve their potential and the American dream. Okay. And we can be found at brother www brother to brother dot org. And that's Excellent. I I. Okay. And uh, with uh, my company, um, Cool Ass Nerds, the pro education clothing company, and pretty much is about the message, peddling that message, and it's where street IQ meets book IQ. It's a fusion of being cool, hip, and abstract, coupled with those who are smart, plain, and technical melded together to form the perfect blend of harmony. And, and how can we talking how, about Barack Obama? I know that's show, right. People of the life. And how can we find Cool as Nerds? www.coolassnerds. That's K O O L A S N E R D Z. Love it. Okay, Reggie, real quick, what are your advice do you have for uh, parents raising black males today? Um, let them know that sky's the limit. It's still the limit. That that you can do anything. Um, there's leadership voids right now that we can all plug. Everyone. Everyone has an opportunity to be a leader. And because of our population, the things that are going on in our community with fewer and fewer African-American males taking on leadership roles, that creates a great opportunity for all of us to become leaders Excellent. and take the reins. Otto, take us out. What is your uh, thoughts or, or advice for parents being the young brother? What's your thoughts for uh, instilling leadership in today's black men? I have to agree with my man right here that, you know, keeping them busy definitely should be the focus and um, just definitely keep them busy all right excellent thank you all for listening in and tuning in to the dialogue thank you kevin hall henry washington reggie jones sawyer lawrence hewley and our sponsors terry boykins and street positive along with la noma join us next week as we continue our conversation on the role of black men in helping build urban legacies so please make sure that you tune in this is the dialogue real talk real people i'm your host starter quarrels signing off as my mama's child and my daddy's baby girl until next week
Thank you for tuning in to L.A. Talk Live, reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is L.A. Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned.